Hi guys, welcome to episode number 37 of Fashionpreneur Talk with Gitana Styling Podcast. How are you guys today? How's your fashion business? If you don't know me, my name is Sandra. I am a fashion stylist and a business consultant. And this podcast is about having genuine conversations about fashion entrepreneurship and getting your questions answered. If you want to send us a question, send it to info at gitanastyling.com. Gitana is G-I-T-A-N-A styling.com. You can also join Join us inside our free Facebook group, the Fashion Entrepreneur Club Hangout, where we host events, answer questions, collaborate with each other, right? Remember that you can also check our workbooks and planners to build a successful fashion business on our Etsy store. And if you need more support in your fashion business journey, make sure to check out our online program, the Fashion Business Online Incubator. So today I'm here with you to answer a question that I always get um, that, you know, so I'm going to share, I have so much information to share with you, but I decided to narrow it down to six things because I know we want to make this, you know, short and concise because we can spend hours talking about this, right? But a lot of people ask me, you know, what would you do if you had to start a fashion business again, right? Now with the knowledge that you have with the experience with what you have done with all the people that you have interviewed and worked with you know what would you do if you had to start a fashion business now and okay so I'm gonna go ahead and share with you <laughs> so the first thing I would do is make sure to join a community that I really really love and that I really feel identified with and then join two or three other uh, communities where I can network and learn from people and collaborate and all of that. So many of you have heard this story that when I started out, you know, there were not really many, you know, fashion business, not really any fashion business groups out there. There were a lot of business groups that I joined and there were a lot of fashion groups where you know I joined but they would talk about like these are the new trends for the new season or these are the colors that we're gonna see you know the next quarter or whatever it may be right things that um, help people design come up with ideas and stuff but not how to handle the business right and that's how the fashion entrepreneur entrepreneur club was born right because I was like if I have these questions other people have these questions so let's start having conversations and that's how I started creating the group and courses and classes and, and gathering with people to really talk about business and how could we grow our businesses and be successful in our businesses because not it's not only the design part and the fun part and the luxurious part is the hard work behind the scenes is the learning how to sell and all of that right so I would really recommend joining at least one you know group that you really really like that you can really learn from and then also two or three more groups where you can network and meet people and and you know um collaborate and all of that okay the second thing that I would do I have my list here because I don't want to forget anything important is to test things before making them official okay so a lot of people go ahead and they say oh I want to have a fashion business and then they go ahead and they buy a domain and they file an LLC um they they create the website and they hire someone to do their logo and all of these things and then the last thing they do is start selling right I would start if I would do it all over again, right? Start by testing whatever idea I have. And then once that idea, you know, works, <laughs> then make it more official, okay? Because usually, right, when you have an idea for a product or a program or whatever, right, it doesn't end up being the exact same thing that you started with. So if you spend a lot of time on this aesthetics, on, you know, hiring this person and getting the perfect logo and the perfect website and the perfect business cards and all of that and then that idea doesn't work out then you have to start all over again and you have no money <laughs> right and you feel very frustrated and and very down and that's why a lot of people you know they start a fashion business and then you don't see them ever again they don't they go back to their regular job or you know they don't have enough strength to keep on going with the dream which I don't judge at all I'm just saying 
if you're asking me as a recommendation, I would test things out first, right? And start getting traction, right? And that doesn't mean, you know, you don't have a website and, and you don't create, you know, a social media account. Of course, go ahead and do it, but don't make everything super, super official, like spend a lot of money on all of that. Just start getting the word out there. Start getting yourself involved. Start meeting people. Start testing out things. And then once things pick up and, and you start getting traction and you're like, oh, this is working, then start making it more official. Okay. The third thing would be work on mindset every day. So that's something we hear all the time. But when you're starting out, you usually don't do it, right? Because you're so focused on learning, learning how to create the website, learning how to sell something, learning how to do this, how to do that, right? That you don't work on the mindset. And, you know, it's a tough ride. There's a lot of ups and downs. And if you don't work on mindset, then the lows start getting lower and lower because, you know, it, it's tough, you know, you have to, this didn't work out, now you have to do it this way. This didn't work out, now you have to try this thing. And, you know, for you to be able to continue doing that, right, and get the best results, you have to work on your mindset, you do. So I recommend since the beginning, right, start uh, working on mindset every day. So all of these decisions and all of this process, you have the right mentality, the right perspective, like, oh, I'm learning. I'm, I'm improving and all of that because that's going to help tremendously okay um the fourth thing is I would keep keep my job until my business will make the same amount of money steadily okay so the way I did this and I have no regrets because it has brought me to this point and I have learned so much and there were a lot of pros, uh, you know, to this decision. But if I would do it again, if I would be recommending this to a friend or a daughter or whatever, right, I would do this. I would keep the job and, you know, until I wouldn't make the exact, amount, exact same amount of money or more and do it consistently in the business, I wouldn't leave the job. Um, because when I started, what I did was, I did my nine to five and I would do freelancing doing the thing that I like, right? And freelancing was great because I always had that extra income. And what happened was that at some, some point I started doing the business and then I started freelancing in things that I did on the nine to five. Okay. So, you know, people who I had worked with before, they would hire me for different projects and then th that became the freelancing. And it was great because I got to learn so much and work with so many people and, and, and it helped me a lot in a lot of ways. But you, I always experienced stress because when you're freelancing, you don't know when the money is coming in. You're always thinking about the next project and you're always networking for the next thing. And that stress affects the business, of course, and the instability and all of that. So if I would have to do it again, or if I would start nowadays a new one, I think I would do it that way. Just so you are in a better mindset again, you feel more relaxed, you feel supported, right? Because it will affect so many areas in your life that, yeah, it's worth it doing it that way. Okay, the fifth thing is um, always expand your network and also build a platform. So this one is a two in one. <laughs> The first part is always expand your network. A lot of people, you know, oh, I'm not ready yet. I don't really have a concept or whatever. And then they don't open the social media account or they don't go to the networking events and forget about that. Start networking, start expanding that base, that, that, that network, right? Because it's going to help you so much. You are not going to get to where you want to go if you are always staying safe and, and, and not putting yourself out there. And at the same time, as you're going through that process, build a platform. So these could be your social media account or a podcast or whatever it is. Start creating content consistently. And it doesn't matter if you started with something and then you switch to something else. It doesn't matter. You're building um, your reputation. You're building a journey. People are, are, are getting to know you, right? And that's only going to bring good things, okay? Don't, don't wait till you're ready because maybe years go by and you didn't do anything. So I have to tell you, you know, I don't regret anything that I started. 
I don't regret anything that I started. I regret the things that I didn't start, okay? So for example, um, nowadays I do way more video than before, right? In the beginning, because I come from a production background, I was like, oh, I can't do this because I don't have the right lighting and I don't have the right thing and I don't have the right set and all of that. And that stopped me from creating video content in the beginning. And now I say, wow, I should have started way earlier, even if it wasn't perfect, even if it's still not perfect, okay? Um, because, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that you regret. If I started the podcast, for example, I've never regretted that. Maybe in the beginning, I didn't feel comfortable. Maybe I didn't know what I was doing. Maybe, you know, I had to keep improving. Maybe you feel like a fool. Yes, but every time you do it, you get better, you improve, you attract more people, you're connecting with more people, you're learning, you're growing. It's so like I said, <laughs> you know, build a platform along the way, whether even if that's just an Instagram account where you share fashion content, it's okay. Start somewhere and always, always, always expand your network, meaning go to events, meet with people, join classes, do things where you can continue to learn with people, from people, collaborate with people, because that's going to take you places. And then the last thing is have fun along the way, okay? Especially in the beginning, we do, we're very excited in the beginning, and then we hit those lows because it's so hard. <laughs> and we go, you know, we have to, we're stressed, we have to learn so much. So again, going back to the job thing, if you have the money, also, if you're working on the mindset, also, if you are in different in groups and you're getting support, if you are um, meeting people, all these other steps that I talk about help you, right? Have a different uh, point of view and enjoy the journey because if you only focus on the stress and, and everything, you're going to lose that passion that you started with. The only way to remain passionate about what you're doing and the whole process is to really take care of all these things, have a good mentality, and have fun. And also, you know, not only to make it more enjoyable, but also to have, you know, achieve the results that you want. If you are not having fun, and you're down and you're negative, you're not gonna get there. So you have to make sure that you're positive and you're excited and that you're learning and you're growing so you achieve the results that you want, okay? So yeah, what do you guys think? Um, have any of these you know, resonated with you? Are you practicing any of these? Do you have any questions about any other things that you can do or not do throughout this process, please let me know. If you like the podcast, please let me know. Send me an email, uh, leave me a review, uh, like it, share it, subscribe to show your support. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sending your questions. And yeah, if you have any other questions, please leave them, send them my way. So I create more videos like this. And thank you for watching the podcast. I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.